Section 4, Chroma and Luma Keying. In this video, we're going to look at how to apply a chroma key. All right, so the next step in Premiere Pro that we're going to look at is applying chroma and color keys, essentially the same thing. So the end result of that looks something cool like this. Shows and projects. Uh, the thrust video is the most... So chroma keying is used to key out or remove a background of an image or a video clip to reveal what's behind, kind of what the person is talking about, Usually a lot of this is used in documentaries, sort of if they're talking on a green screen with some footage behind. Big time for special effects and movies, for sure. Really big thing, only getting bigger and not going away. So we have this as our end result. Uh, the thrust video is the most... But we started with this. So from this to this. So the biggest thing if you're going to do a green screen key is the lighting in studio. Very important. So the better you shoot it in studio, the easier it is going to key in post-production. So we have a shot of this guy here. I think we saw him in the multicam video a couple chapters ago. He's uh, doing an interview. Static shot, just sitting there not moving. So we want to remove this green screen to reveal the shot here behind him. So if we go to our effects panel, and if you go to video effects, in this section we have a folder called keying. So there are some various other effects in here, but the three that we're going to concentrate on in this video are color key, alter key, and luma key. In this video, we're going to look at the color key. So just like any other effect, I have my clip highlighted. I double click. The color key is now applied to the video clip. If we go up to effect controls, collapse this, color key. So the first thing it's looking for is the key color. That's the color of the background you want to remove in your clip. Now it's defaulting to blue. That's kind of an old, uh, video thing. It used to be a lot of stuff was shot on blue screen many, many years ago, but it's changed now to green screen. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. You can shoot on any color, really. You can key out any color. Green is the most common. So, what you got to do is we take our eyedropper and we come to our clip. Now, now just for example, if I selected uh, the gentleman's shirt, all right, and then I picked up the tolerance, the shirt starts to disappear, and then eventually the green does. So we don't want that. But what we want to do is select the green. Now, here's a tip. I would select the green closest to the subject. So it keys out this area around him better than the areas around here. You're going to think it's kind of the same color, and it is, but just as it moves along the screen, the light kind of changes. So you just want to get as close as you can to the subject. So if I click right close here, all right, I can see here I have a green swatch. So the first thing you do is open up the color tolerance slider and begin to slide and watch. The green starts to disappear. Looking pretty good. Oh, a little problem. Now the shirt is starting to disappear, but we still have some green left here. So I drop this back down to 33, maybe 31. Now let's try 32. So it looks good around here, but we still got some green left here. That's because, you see how it's darker here, much lighter here? So the green isn't consistent in this green screen shot. That's why it's important to pay attention to the lighting in the studio when you're doing something like this. So let's put the key back on. So what do we do with that? Well, one thing we can do is we can mask this out. That's one way. Or we can draw a mask around the subject. So let's remove the key for now, or rather let's reset it. Okay, so back to the way it was. So what we want to do is draw a mask using the opacity parameter. Okay, so I take my pen tool, click, click. Remember we drew masks in a previous video on video effects. So I'll draw all the way around. Now this takes some refining. So I've gone ahead and have a clip here with a mask already completed. So by drawing around the subject, close our mask off. So I get it nice and tight all the way around best I can. So I've removed all of the green, and especially the part here, so it does not need to be keyed out anymore. So now that's done. Go back. I can apply the color key to my clip now. Take my dropper and select a green shade very, very close to the subject, as close as I can. Say there, tolerance, 
slide it up. I think we're in the 33, 32 range. Good. Much better. And we don't have that green down here to deal with. However, we got a little bit of green on the top of the hair. And that's where green screen or chroma keying can be a little bit tricky. So we have a couple other parameters we can work with here. Take our edge thin. Scale it back a bit. Now, watch if I take this too far. It starts to eat into the ears a bit. So you just want to have it maybe at two. But if I show you the other way, it kind of brings more green out. Now, you could do this and take a new color key and keep applying it. But that's just sort of gets a little out of control. You don't want to keep adding key after key after key. Then you kind of lose track of what you're keying. So let's just bring this back to, say, two. Okay. And then the feather to soften it out as much as we can. There we are. It's looking pretty good. And then let's turn on our video track below. Okay. Give that a render because we have a lot of effects applied to it now. All right, so let's check that. Remove my ins and out points here. Great shows and projects. Very nice. Compare that to my finished product. Shows and projects. Uh, the thrust video. Cool. Now let's see how I did. So I had my color tolerance at 34, edge thinner at 3, edge feather at 9.2. That's the one I did previously. Compared to this one, pretty close. A little lower on the feather, but uh, looks pretty good. So that's one way to do a chroma key in Premiere Pro. Now that's one way to do a chroma key in Premiere Pro using the color key effect and adding a mask to uh, remove anything that doesn't key well. But if you're going to do something with a clip where the person is moving in the shot with the green screen effect behind them, that mask isn't going to be very useful. Sure, you could track it frame by frame. You'll be working at it for hours and hours.